what? We're live. Hey, guess what? It's just the Scott Kid in a night of the round table. Kid points. It's Thursday night. We're at the B&B &B and on the phone with us from Alberta, Canada, what, Edmonton, right? Alberta, Canada, is Amy Wallish. Hi, Amy. Hello. So, my dear, um, tell the world a little bit about who you are. How long have you been playing music? Um, and why singer-songwriter on your own? Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm Amy. Um, I uh, guess I, I grew up in Canada. Uh, my family owns a greenhouse business, so I would say I'm a flower child, because I kind of am. Um, and so that has kind of been my main job for, for the past couple of years, I've gone to school and I work at a greenhouse, and that's what I do. Um, but as far as music goes, um, I've been playing piano since I was, I think, eight years old. I started doing classical music, and I just, like, I love doing that, and I always wrote songs. I think I wrote my first song when I was eight years old, too, and I, it's kind of funny. So my aunt getting married and I really did not like the guy she was marrying and I decided that I was going to write this song and in it I like took shots at him like as much shots as an eight-year-old can take <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah it was, like my first songwriting experience <laughs> the eight. Eight. <laughs> yeah so so right. that was yeah that how I kind of got started with songwriting and then I just kept kind of writing throughout high school and I taught myself a little guitar and I continued to play piano and do like Royal Conservatory classical stuff and then when I was 16 I quit um because I actually battled mental illness of various kinds and um I had to go to the hospital and so after I got out of the hospital I never really touched the piano or like music again and so from probably 16 to 21 ish I maybe picked up like a guitar like once a year and like we just kind of you know write here and there and sing the blues and do all that kind of stuff because that's what reflected my current life situation um and then uh when I was 21, yeah, I moved, I moved back home, and I was really struggling with mental illness and with addiction, and so I got clean and sober, and when I got clean and sober, I started playing music again, and then I just, like, I'd always written um, songs on the guitar, and I was like, you know what, I'm a piano player, like, I've done classical my whole entire life, I know how to play the freaking piano, so why don't I just sit down and write some piano music. So I did, and then I started performing just like open mic nights over all over the city and um, meeting people here and there. And um, that was kind of, yeah, how I got back into music. And then from there, like I didn't ever think I would do music as a career or actually pursue it seriously. But this past year, um, I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just going to like post some videos on, on Instagram and, you know, see if I can get some traction and, um, a couple different producers contacted me and, um, you know, a lot of the time when a producer contacts you over Instagram, it's like, you know, they're making beats in their basement and it's not really, uh, <laughs> it's not that great of a deal. Um, or they're really flaky. Like, musicians are pretty flaky, and I know that I myself can be kind of like, I don't know if I call myself flaky, but I'm absent-minded. And so, like, I, you know, that was just kind of the experience. But then there was this one producer who sent me a bunch of tracks, and I just, I wrote to them, and then I sent him some of my stuff, and he, like, started working on it and producing it, and we kind of just have been going back and forth ever since. And um, we released our first single together. And, you know, you just keep making connections from there and stuff keeps happening. So 
that's kind of been my musical journey in a nutshell, I suppose. Wow. So when we received our email from you, you had sent us Cry, which we played on Tuesday night as a sneak peek to this. Do you want to speak a little bit about that? Because I didn't read the email. We just played the song. But the <laughs> your like press kit that came with it was very moving as to what and how that song came to be. Yeah, so Cry kind of came out of this place of just un uncertainty. Um, I, after yeah, moving home and getting my life together, I got to this place where I was like, you know what? Like, I think I can do this whole life thing. Like, I feel... Yeah, you know, like a strong, independent woman, man. <laughs> I finally got it together. Um, and I can feed myself. I can dress myself every day. I can shower often enough that people won't notice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I got to that place, and I was like, you know, I feel like I'm finally ready to be an adult, but I have, like, no idea what to do after this and where to start. And I just kind of have this picture of just like, you're at your doorstep and you have a suitcase and you're ready to go. And there's just, you know, this vast like abyss in front of you and you don't even like, it's just daunting, right? And that is kind of what I, I do feel about the next step of life is I'm ready for it, but I have no idea what to expect. I don't know what the next steps are. And, um, yeah, it's, it's weird to be in that place as, like, a 24-year-old. I feel like I am where a lot of 18-year-olds are, you know? Like, they... <laughs> you are yeah. where everybody is. Here's a, <laughs> I'm just going to let you know that it doesn't get easier as you get older. You just get better <laughs> at bullshitting the things that come along. There is no preparedness no. plan for life. That door... Of the abyss just constantly opens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that imposter syndrome. And I, I always feel that all the time. I'm like, I'm just bluffing through this. Like, I, I really have no idea what I'm doing. But, um, yeah, I kind of was at that point where it's like, hey, I'm clean and sober. I got my act together. Like, I can do this now. So, like, what's next? And that is where I was written out of and yeah and that has been like your jumping off song right like that's what you're sending out what um as like was that produced by this producer you started working with yeah yeah so his name is Troy Marshall and he um is based in Toronto and has a little production company there and um I sent him the piano and everything and he sends me back like this weird thing with strings in it and I was like yo dude like this isn't the song I sent you <laughs> um he's like I think it's really interesting Amy like just give it a shot like put your metronome on sing like the lyrics to it and just see what happens and so uh that's what I did and um it's interesting because the song isn't you know the most commercial pop song ever but I think um the more I listen to it the more I love it and there's something that's special with songs how many songs do you listen to especially like your own songs and you listen to them and you're like oh I hate this I never want to listen to this again or you listen to it 10 times and you're like oh I'm sick of it and I never feel that way with cry and I think it's because it's, it's it's interesting and it's kind of weird and it's not necessarily something that's going to grab every person, but um, people who love music or who really love poetry and stuff like that, I think it kind of like grabs those people and like speaks to their emotions and their hearts. And um, so, yeah, it wasn't what I had originally in intended. And tonight I'll play kind of the original version of Cry, and you'll get to hear that, too. So that'll be exciting. Cool. But I think it created, like, an interesting piece overall and a little artistic and avant-garde. Oh, yeah. that's what I said. Yeah. 
not a joke while we were eating dinner. I was like, it's very artsy and it's like avant-garde jazz. So, <laughs> yes, that's, that is how I would describe it. And it is like, you got the strings in there and you almost have like a spooky voice. Like, <laughs> the, 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 like, intonation and, like, t timber of your voice just kind of is, it's like Halloween-y. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it goes well with the rest of that. It is very interesting mix of a song. Yeah, it's like, I kind of, when I write music, I'm, well, like, songs like that, I'm like, I want my voice to haunt you. <laughs> You did a good so job. Yeah. So how, Amy, would you descri describe what you're doing? Like, all right, you're a singer-songwriter, but do you classify yourself in a genre? And if so, how and why? That is a tough thing that I have been kind of mulling over for quite some time. Um, because I think it's, you know, easier um, as a consumer to consume content that's within a genre, and it's easier as somebody who's trying to market themselves and sell themselves to be like, this is who I am, put it in a little box. And I don't feel like I can do that with my music, and that has been challenging. But at the same time, I don't think that artists these days necessarily need to um, I think they're, like, music is always evolving and developing, and you as a person are always evolving and developing and changing and growing, and I think music should reflect that. Mm -hmm. And that can be really challenging maybe as somebody who, you know, falls in love with an artist, and then, you know, they change and you don't like their new style and all kind of stuff. But um, as a musician, I think that's how you keep things fresh and exciting and um, keep your heart in it. So I thought about, you know, like, I guess I could do like the whole pop thing because most of my music could fit into like a pop alternative kind of genre. But like sometimes I want to do funk and sometimes <laughs> I want to do like weird abstract stuff. And I love doing jazz and I sometimes like to rock out. And so I feel like why not give myself a chance to do that? And that doesn't mean that everybody's going to love it. And I might not have the most like concrete fan base, but that's okay with me as an artist who wants to do this for years and years and years to come. So, yeah. How about, you know, you said that as far as like a fan base is concerned, what, and, and that you had been um, going out and doing open mics and such. Have you, what, what, I guess, have you been doing through COVID? And what is the scene like there in uh, Alberta? So there's not a ton going on in Alberta right now. Most, um, well, most restaurants and stuff are open, but you can't have singing um, in public places. So you know, there is, like, instrumental shows and stuff going on. But not really a lot of, yeah, bands or anything like that. Um, so I've done a lot more stuff online. Um, I did like a little half hour set or 20 minute set for this, um, for like this creative arts collective in the UK, actually. And that was really cool. So um, I did that. And then I've just been focusing a lot on writing and production right now because I have a bunch of stuff that I've written and I could write all day long but actually putting it you know into production and recording it is a really challenging and new process to me and when you're doing all like the editing and fine-tuning that's very different from just sitting down and you know writing something out of your heart in your head so I've been working a lot on that just because there hasn't been a lot of opportunity to perform. Um, and then I've also just been trying to make connections and apply for it. Like Edmonton has an arts council and they um, 
give grants. So I've been applying for grants and just trying to see if I can get as much support as possible. And the Edmonton music scene is pretty, like, it. I would say it's not, like, the most thriving music scene. It's quite underground. Like, you have to look for it. And then when you find it, the people there are amazing. I remember an open mic night I went to at this place, and it was, like, literally, like, this little underground tavern. And by, like, 12, like, midnight, it had filled up, and people all had, like, tambourines and shakers, and, like, everybody was, like, participating in this open mic night and just grooving out, and it was so fun. Um, and there's a lot of little places like that. There's this one guy, and he has this studio, like a, not a studio, it's like a little internet fiber cafe. He turns it into, um, I think an open mic place in the evenings and it's the most beautiful grand piano I've ever seen and like any equipment you would ever need for any kind of like musical thing and he like just opens it up to people and he makes like no money from it <laughs> but he loves his music so much and he just facilitates the arts in that place and so there's a lot of little places like that because there's people who just love art here and um, I mean, Edmonton is called Festival City because we have, like, the most festivals in the world or something like that. I don't know if it's still that way, but wow. there are really love the arts here. So, that's, yeah. That's awesome. You're very fortunate to have that in your, you know, palm of your hand. Um, mm -hmm. With that kind of being said and you, you know, pairing up now and doing things, have any of those uh gone virtual has there been any virtual open mics and if not you should connect with your local scene and start that <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to think and i know there's this one organization that called yeg music and they put on shows all over the city and i worked with them for a little bit and it's really cool like they'll have four different artists um perform at a single venue and you like buy tickets, come in, and then it's a profit share, and you just split all the profits. And it's just a really easy way to start meeting other artists and get experience. And so they have been doing podcasts over this time, but they haven't actually done any, like, performances. So, like, now I just get on the job. We should contact them and do something like that. I mean, but, yeah. Because, I mean, right now, that's been, um, I think, the hardest part of, you know, the whole COVID pandemic. Not only can we not see friends, but those things that are so near and dear to us, like the arts, um, had to take to a new platform. And so being able to continue to offer that is, you know, I think paramount in continuing to help with happy <laughs> and connection. Um, yeah. So when you perform, do you solely stick to piano or do you also bring in other instruments because that's how, you know, your guitar that you know how to play or are you just now solely focused on I sing and I do piano? <laughs> um, well, I used to do like just guitar when I first started playing open mic nights because it's not every place has a piano, so it's nice to have both in your wheelhouse. Um, but now I mainly I mainly stick with playing piano and singing because um, I find I can do so much more and explore a lot more interesting sounds um, with more ease and comfort. I'm like I can just explore a lot of interesting sounds on the guitar, but <laughs> they might not sound as nice to everyone else. Um, so yeah, I'm mainly sticking to piano and um, try to like borrow people. I don't have my own keyboard, so I just borrow keyboards from friends and uh, take that with me to perform wherever I go. Uh -huh. And that's kind of how I've been doing things. So, yeah. So, with you being, you know, this solo artist, um, and you kind of made mention of this, you're doing all of it. You're writing, you're producing, or, you know, having some assistance with that editing, 
all of that fun stuff from idea to song how long does it take you doing this all of yourself to get to finished product mm, that's a good question and it really depends on the song um there are some songs where they're just like you know your simple acoustic song and there's not a lot going on in them vocally or instrumental wise and so usually that will take like a week to finish and part of the reason it takes a week is because um i'm sending stuff back and forth over the internet with my producer we both have other jobs so you know we just kind of have to squeeze it in where we can so that would kind of be one of the more simple songs and then some of the songs where you got like you know, a hundred different background vocals going on and all that kind of stuff. They can take usually two to three weeks, so I'm happy. And I think is yeah, like having having a song finished and being happy with it is a very different thing. And I think <laughs> you'll never you'll never be finished or happy to a certain extent. And a lot of the times, I just have to like shut everything down and be like, you know, what? it's good enough. No one else is going to, like, know or hear the things that I am hearing or not hearing. And I just want to get it out there because I know I'm going to get better and I'm going to write better songs and I want to move on to that and give myself the chance to do that and not just sit in the same rut for, you know, however long it takes, you know? So where does your inspiration come from? Like, your lyrical content comes from what? What oh, is your man. news? <laughs> it comes from a lot of different things. Um, I mean, I once wrote a, a song. It's essentially like a breakup song. Probably one of the best breakup songs I ever wrote. And it was actually about quitting my job at Starbucks when I was <laughs> 16. And so there's songs like that where you have, you know, like the weirdest inspiration and it turns into this really moving song. Um, there are times where I just want to experiment with like a sound or a different um, structure of song. And so a lot of those times the songs don't feel as, like the lyrics don't come as naturally and as organically and they might not necessarily tell a comprehensive story. Um, but I just am trying to like explore new chord progressions or I want to, you know, have a chunk of time where I can just like solo or do something different because I want to grow in those areas as a musician. Um, sometimes I write songs, like a friend will give me like a theme and a key and will be like, yo, write a song. And I'll be like, okay, I can do that. Um, and I think a lot of my content, though, comes from well, relationships, like anybody, um, and uh, just going through, yeah, going through mental illness and addiction, and that's where a lot of things come out of, and then being coming comfortable with yourself and who you are, mm. and that is what I've seen, like, the past kind of progression has moved from like being stuck in like depression and going through crap to you know kind of getting clean and sober and trying to start something new and then being like yeah I'm the woman (laughs) (laughs) is it would you say now kind of looking back because you've mentioned it a few times that you've overcome um you know addiction and have mental illness do you feel as if this exploration of life and rediscovering music has brought um, a different sense of empowerment and clarity yeah I think it does because I'm not somebody who like I don't process my feelings very well on a regular day and I don't journal I don't you know, I could talk to a psychologist, but more often I lie to a psychologist, <laughs> which, you know, is not helpful. And so I find 
in my music, that's the place where I feel most comfortable being honest with myself and with, and I can put words to what I am trying to process or whatever I'm going through. And I think um, a lot of the ugly truths about myself as well, I feel more comfortable admitting in music. And um, I'm not sure, I'm not hundred percent sure why that is. It could be because you almost like when you're performing, it's like you you put on a persona to an extent and I feel like no one else can touch me. Like no one can tell me what I'm doing is wrong or right because this is a subjective thing. Like this is just, you know, you I kind of feel like protected in a way. And so I can get those things out and, um, process them and um yeah sometimes I'll just like be ad living and trying to say what's on my mind and what I'm going through and um there'll be like you know breakthrough and clarity in that and um and then I get to share it with the rest of the world <laughs> and when you share it with the rest of the world you kind of have to get to a point where you've like either healed enough from it or you're okay with being vulnerable and like broken and hurting in front of people um, to just like let that go and whatever comes back, comes back. And um, I mean, most of the time, nobody's going to say anything. Um, they're just going to be like, oh, I like that song you did, or it really moved me. Or sometimes your mom will say, Amy, I don't like hearing you call yourself a loser. <laughs> So, you know, all of that happens, and yeah. So, um, how, like, I've seen some of your pictures on Instagram, and I have, when you sent Cry, um, there was, like, blue, right, teardrops or raindrops coming down through it as it played, it looked like. So, <laughs> who does your art, um... Or are you responsible for all of your art, too? <laughs> yeah, I do all of my artwork. Um, so for Cry, the YouTube video is just like a picture, and it does have, like, raindrops coming down. And my producer has this program on his software where he could just, I don't know, put that in and turn it into a video. So he put in those raindrops. Mm -hmm. um, but all of, like, the photos and all the editing and everything like that and do myself and I enjoy doing it um I like have apps where they'll just be like photo timers and I can just do a photo shoot so it doesn't look like I'm taking you know selfies all the time <laughs> um and I do like I have I feel bad because I have friends that are like photographers and artists and stuff like that but um I'm like at this point I just can't pay them to do that stuff and I I enjoy doing it so I'm like why don't I just do it myself and I think there is a little bit of a kind of control issue there <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like I I want to control my image and what's you know going out and yeah. what people are seeing so yeah you know with that kind of being said do you have merchandise available to go along with your music have you ventured into that yet not yet but i've been thinking about that a lot the past couple of days and one of the reasons is because there's a song competition going on right now where you can just submit like a video of you singing a live song and they will print um like 300 vinyl copies of it for you to like do whatever with and I was like oh that's pretty cool and so I started thinking about Whoa. um the merchandise thing because it's you know you don't really make a ton of money off of music when you're a little person like me <laughs> um you make money from performing but people can really make money from the merchandising game and not that that is what music is about for me but it helps and it helps me continue to be able to, you know, do what I love to do. And so um, I'm like, if I could get that, like, 
vinyl print thing going on, that would be cool. Because people love vinyl, even if they don't know the artist or what the song is. They're like, ooh, that's vinyl. It's hipster. I want to be hip. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is true. Vinyl has made a very huge comeback. Um, yeah. And that's cool. I, so where, what is this competition? Tell us more. I'm curious. I, I'm going to find it um, so I can find the website so I can give you the right information. What is it called here? Because um, that's really a neat opportunity so it's just a competition you submit yourself playing a live song and if you win they're gonna give you vinyl yeah oh that is yeah i don't find it here because it's pretty cool um so it's through this website called record store day canada and you go to this there's like a link on it and it's called microforumvinyl.com. So if there's any artists listening, go to microforumvinyl.com. Awesome. And it's uh, it's a contest for unsigned artists. So yeah, it's super easy to submit. You just put in your name and your info and submit a video of a live performance. So they don't even want anything crazy produced or whatever, just the raw package. <laughs> Make sure it's washed. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so, uh, as far as other rules, like, can it be a band? It can be yeah. anybody? Yeah. That would be pretty yeah. cool. Dude, right? Cool. Right. You're going to do that, yeah? I'm so doing it. I'm like, this is, this, if I could start my merchandise game off with this, that would be cool. Yeah, but then you've, like, reached the top already. <laughs> uh, no, I'm like, what's the next novelty item after that? I don't know. Uh, bottle openers. Oh, uh, yeah. They're pretty cool. Oh, and koozies, um, koozies are also a really awesome. Uh, we had a band give us bookmarks. So ooh, I wow. liked that. It was pretty cool. Radio Hate gave us bookmarks. Um, right. Yeah, I like interesting and different pieces of merchandise because everybody has buttons and stickers and t-shirts, but those novelty items are like, you can do that, you've, you've won the game over here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Um, so that competition sounds really neat. You'll have to let us know what, like, when you do it and what, yeah. the, what the outcome of that is. Um, I'm, I will be sending you some vinyl. If, like, <laughs> so how about, you know, speaking of, of goals with your musical career, now that you've kind of, it sounds just like recently become more professional. Um, mm -hmm. and it's like forming, I would say even, you know, before yourself, um, what, what is your goal? Are you planning on releasing a full length? Are you looking at, you know, after COVID, I want to set up tours here, here, and here. Like what, what's the goal? What's the end game, Amy? Yeah. Um, so I am working on a bunch more music right now and I'm releasing another single in October. So that's coming up right away. And I hope to have an EP together by the new year. So that's kind of the next step, but I really do love performing. That's kind of where it's at for me. And um, I think I'm hoping in the future that I'll be able to put a band together and, you know, maybe do some touring around Canada and wherever else it takes me. My dream is like live out of a van and like perform concerts all over like the place. <laughs> I, I guess that might be smaller than a lot of people's dreams. But I'm like, man, if I can have like a hippie van with like some bead curtains, shag carpet, incense going on in the back, <laughs> and just like travel the world in that and play music. Oh, that would be it. That would be so. pretty good. <laughs> 
we we had a band that did that there, and I think they might be now grounded a bit because of COVID, but they showed up in their van. They clogged our toilet twice that night. They ate our they ate our food with their hands, and uh, they did a hundred shows in a hundred days. And wow. they they have traveled all over the U.S. now because that is that's his goal, and he's doing it. Houston and the Dirty Rats. So shout out to them. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, as far as putting a band together, Amy, what would you what would you sound like like what who who would be in this band like would you, what kind of ide idea would you have because it would be something you know completely different than what you're doing now or would you just add more instruments around what you're doing yeah i think to start i would add some more instruments around what i'm doing and then you know see where it goes from there because i love writing with other people and um I haven't got a lot of opportunities to do so, but I feel like that just naturally flows out of being part of a band. So if that's what happens, that's what happens. But if, you know, it stays a solo thing and, you know, you just hire the band for the tour, like, I mean, I'm kind of like, we'll just see what happens and, you know, roll with it. But um, I think when you can form a band where, you really have like a chemistry together as writers and performers. It creates just a more electric and convincing um, act to watch. And I know that I personally appreciate that as somebody who likes to go to shows. And um, I feel like I'd probably just start with like adding like somebody who can play some guitar or somebody who can um, play some drums or go home. Like, my dream is to marry a drummer. So if you're a drummer and you like a little <laughs> bump in Canada, just, you know, saying, hey, I want to marry you and please join my band. Um, maybe not in that order, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, I, like, we'll see what happens. Like, I don't, I have, I have lots of friends who play music, but a lot of them are in their own bands or you know, it's just a hobby. So to find somebody who's really committed and is like, yo, I want to do this with you, like that's a pretty special and surprisingly difficult thing to find. Um, I, although there's lots of creepy 40-year-old, 50-year-old dudes on Instagram who want to be my drummer. So, but, yeah, that seems to be the market I appeal to right now. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Nope, you're not doing anything wrong. That is the market that this stuff appeals to. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, demographics. What is that? The the data you can extrapolate from social media. Thanks, creepy old guys, for making us successful. <laughs> um, that reminds me of the first time I ever went busking, and I. Like, Edmonton's an oil town, right? So there's lots of oil money here. There at least used to be. And I was, like, fresh 18, and I go stand outside a bar, and I'm just, like, strumming a guitar with an open guitar case. And this really drunk dude, he, like, comes in, he's like, this girl is amazing. Give her money. And he, yeah, he's, like, an or older, you know, 50-year-old guy, and he just throws 20 into my guitar case. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. Fucking <coughs> TV. <laughs> wow. It's never happened to me again, but that was a pretty cool experience. <laughs> yeah. How long did you busk for, and do you still do that? Uh, I haven't um, for quite some time, but I did busk for about a year when I was 18, and I was living right on White Ave, which is kind of the busy avenue here where all like the bars and clubs are, and um, you don't need a license to busk in the city of Edmonton, so um, I would just go out at night, and I didn't have anything else really going on in my life, so that's what I would do. Um, and right now I live kind of out, just outside of the city, so it's not quite as convenient, but 
I enjoy it. I would definitely get back into it once um, it's a little more socially appropriate. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, like, so we live in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and everything's open here. There's music happening. Um, there's shows going on, and it just feels kind of odd. Uh, and every, mm. everybody we talk to is like, that's weird. We still can't go out places. So, yeah. I mean, how, you know, how is Canada and Edmonton specifically kind of are opening back up? Like, what are the rules? Do you guys, like, have bars open? Or is it still like, yeah, wear your mask, stay home? It's strongly advised that you wear your mask and stay home. Um, you have to wear a mask, like, anywhere you go. Um, and so restaurants and bars are open, but you have to, like, wear your mask, and then you can take it off when you sit at your table, and all the tables are, like, socially distanced, and then, you know, you put it back on, and then you leave. Like, it's not... It's, it's just not the same experience as going out and socializing and listening to music. You can't really do that. Although there is, like, they kind of widen the sidewalk, so they've, like, blocked off some of the streets, and they have, like, a lot more outdoor stuff going on. So we'll have, like, picnic tables set up outside, and, um, like, I've seen some guys with, like, PA systems and stuff just playing guitar out there. So um, the only unfortunate thing about that is it's starting to get really cold here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. What's your weather like there? Is well, it, like, pretty similar? Or? I would think so. So today... Cold swamp. Cold swamp. <laughs> it was about <laughs> sixty today, but yes, it we're we're going to hit cold, humid weather. So yeah, we get cold, dry, so we don't quite get the humidity, which apparently is actually better. I've heard. I've heard cold humidity is bone chilling. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. You just. <laughs> you just constantly feel angry because nothing is warm, including your insides. Like, you just, if when it becomes real winter, you just have to pretend you're happy. <laughs> because it, it, can, it can get pretty gross. Um, but it was beautiful today. Like, I jumped outside after work and I was like, it's fall! <laughs> I like jumped around our driveway yelling that and Kip Kip is like, uh yeah. Sometimes I'm five and I enjoy the little things. <laughs> oh yeah, amen to that. <laughs> but do you think like that being said, are you gonna do anything maybe outside before it gets cold? Like you you know, pop down to like a picnic table and just play and see what happens? Yeah, you know, maybe I'll do that tomorrow, you know? Because I'm still borrowing a friend's keyboard, so why not? <laughs> mm. How does that work, um, work coordinating, like, borrowing equipment to meet your goals and getting your music done? Yeah, so that can be very challenging. Um, usually, I, plan, I try to plan things, like, a month in advance. And I'm not a planner, so that's really difficult for me. Um, so I just, I can, I'm a person who can get a lot done in a really short amount of time, and I just, like, you know, I'll spend, like, an entire day where I just do music, and I'll do it from, like, 8 a.m. to, like, 10 p.m., and I don't feel tired. And then afterwards, I'm like, wow, that was a really long day of music. I'm done now. <laughs> So, yeah, that kind of how I have to do things a lot of the time. Um, and then, you know, just that's how you have to coordinate things even with having a, a job is you save your, your weekends and your evenings for just powering through that music. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how I do it. So you said you work at a greenhouse? Yeah. What do you guys grow? Um. So, we don't grow marijuana, which is what most people want to know about. <laughs> I didn't even go there, but hey. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's legal in Canada, so everyone's like, "Are you? Do you guys grow marijuana?" And I was like, "No, we don't." Like, and then part of the reason is like the security on your facility that you need to have. If you do that, is insane. So that's just anyway. That's a side conversation. But yeah, we <laughs> mostly like bedding plants, annuals, perennials. Um, like it's been in our family for a hundred and two years now. Damn. So it's a third generation family business. Yeah. Um, and that's just what we've always done and always do. And it started off with my great grandparents mostly doing like produce. And then my grandfather, he kind of introduced, um, more like bedding plants and annuals. And then my dad, he... You know, got to go to university and take agriculture, which is a luxury, you know, his dad and his grandfather really had. So, um, because of that, he was a lot able to do a lot more. And now it's quite a quite a big business, actually. And um, we are open seasonally, so we start growing stuff in like kind of the Jan- January, February, and we're open in May, and then we usually sell out at the beginning of July. And then after that, you do all the cleanup and prepare for the next season. So that's kind of how it goes. Cool. Very yeah. neat. So what's your favorite flower, Amy? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I I do. I like flowers. Um, like, I have to say, a classic sunflower, like, that hits me in the right way. But I really like greenery. And I think that's also like a kind of younger generation thing. My mom says that younger generations are obsessed with greenery for some reason. So the plant that I'm like in love with right now is it's called coleus. I don't know if you know what that is, but <laughs> Yeah. Is that the thing that the leaves have um through them it, it they look like lines and they can be different colored and patterned? Yeah, I've heard so cool. I mean the coolest that's name. Like there's one that's called the coleosaurus and then there's one that's called spice curry and like they just have the best name so i'm like how could you not like that one? Oh, that's cool we um have a garden and so we've been planting and growing things as well and so uh i like hearing that other people are also continuing that too we need more plants on earth than people so. yeah. <laughs> And, you know, keep doing the greenery because that's, it's important. Um, So, Amy, as we're getting close to the top of the hour, do you want to give us a little rundown of what during the second half we can expect as far as what you'll be performing, what folks can, you know, what surprises you're going to throw in, if any, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I have about hour hopefully an hour of music time for you and usually I have quite a lot of like heavy music so I'm planning to kind of have some upbeat stuff at the beginning sandwich a bunch of like heavy emotional crap in the middle and then we'll end off with something a little happier and upbeat as well um and you know I kind of sometimes I like to tell stories about songs so there might be a story here and there but um I definitely want to provide some background music for your evening as much as possible so nice. that's kind of the plan yeah cool and then out of what it is you're gonna play how many songs then are available for people to like follow up and find so out of what I'm gonna play there is one like i'm gonna play cry so that's the song i'm gonna release and then some of the other songs i have like you know instagram page like on um, i have some full songs up there so you can kind of look there for now um and i'm hoping to do live videos and post live videos of all of my music that is unreleased and that i just kind of sing for myself because there's some music that I like to, I don't necessarily want to produce and I don't necessarily want to release. Um, and, and I think a part of that's because I really love 
performing it and I feel like it's just like mine. And so, um, but I wanted, I started kind of recording those and videoing them and posting them on my Instagram page. So you can find some of the stuff that I'm playing tonight up there. So what platforms do you use? Cause you've said Instagram a bunch, but where, <laughs> so, so we know that you, give us the rundown. Where can people find you online? Yeah. So you like Instagram's the main one I use because I can connect my Facebook and my um, Twitter to it as well. So I have Facebook and Twitter and uh, you can find me on those three. And then I got, TikTok because I was told that's what all the cool kids are doing. I'm not very good at using it. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> I don't even really know what it is. I know. Like, Laugh at the old lady, Amy. Know. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's amazing. So, and I have a YouTube channel. There's not a lot up there right now. Um, and part of the reason is I'm not the most technological person. And I can learn how to do all this stuff, but it's kind of hard for me. So once I learn something, I'm like, I'm going to stick with this because it works. Right. Um, but I know that there's different audiences that, you know, use different mediums. So I have been trying to kind of prepare more YouTube stuff for this next song release and get all that stuff up and going so that there's more content for you to consume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, crap. What was I going to ask you? Damn it. It was right there. And then you got, you had me at content. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's gone. I'm befuddled. Um, I asked you where you, Oh, I know what it is. It's back. I got it. It's here. Distributor. Do you use a dis do you use a distributor or, or have you released your music on say SoundCloud, Bandcamp, that sort of thing? Yeah, so you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, and SoundCloud and like all the other little guides to like Deezer and um, Google Play, plus that little, those are pretty big guys as well. <laughs> so you can find it there. And I don't have anything on Bandcamp. Um, I've never used Bandcamp, actually. It's free. Should it, I use Bandcamp? I think everyone should use Bandcamp and fuck all those other platforms because Bandcamp is free and the artist actually maintains their publishing rights and gets all of their royalties. Okay, that's amazing. I just learned so much right now that is so incredible. Yes, I am a huge proponent. So, like, my goal is that we abolish the traditional music industry right now because it's full of, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of third-party people who get rich off of an artist. And that is, um, that's slavery? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that, to me, isn't okay because... You spend a lot of time creating your songs, um, going through and, you know, editing, writing, performing. You put the work in. Why should, why should you then pay somebody to help you maybe, maybe get paid? Like, that doesn't make sense to me, and it never has. Yeah. And I feel like we're very um, stuck in this paradigm. Well, you have to pay to play, Jess. You got to pay a little bit to get ahead. Like, it's your business. Yeah, it's your business. But you know what? Most small business owners aren't going bankrupt trying to run their business because that's bad business. And that's what mu <laughs> the music industry is. You know, we have yeah. this illusion of give me your music and I'll make you famous. When there's a lot of other, like, we could all work together and say, okay, Amy, you work with 10 other sister artists you know, or brother artists, whoever, partners who then like and put out your music just like you would do the same to them. And so we form like a musician's union, you know, by the people, <laughs> for the people, uh, run by the people so that that conglomerate all can help each other 
have money. Because when we help each other, we all succeed. So. Yeah, I love that. That's my, my, soap, my soapbox rant for the evening. I, I like that soapbox. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's just, the, the longer I've done this, the more and more we've, you know, heard people, um, you know, they're paying for lists so that they can, you know, email people their songs. And they mm -hmm. are, um, you know, I understand paying a producer. I get that because yeah. that is a job. Um, but like paying to play at a local show is stupid. Um, oh, you paid for playing a show. Like, <laughs> right. Um, or like even the distributor thing is the biggest issue for me because like you, mm -hmm. you send your music to CD baby and they're getting rich off all you guys with very little bit that they have to do, you know? The, the work that they're doing is totally obtainable if you have a friend who's good at, say, IT and knows the internet. Um, and that's why we got to pull those other people in, too. Like, hey, this is going to be a resource where we all work together so that we all succeed. You know, like plants, they all, like, help us breathe. This is what artists mm -hmm. can do. I'm just going to keep doing spider legs across the screen. That's what I'm going to do. You know what that actually makes me think of? It makes me think of trees, because trees... The root systems are so cool. So the ones that are closer to water, they will bring water to the ones that are further away so they can all be nourished. Isn't that amazing? And that's what that just made me think of. Wonderful. High five, Amy. Boop. I really like <laughs> I that. It. I like that um, analogy. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. If only people could be more like trees. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to end it tonight, Amy. Um, mm -hmm. Online, are you Wallish Music or are you Amy Wallish? Or, or how how should people look you up on Instagram and Facebook and such? Yeah, you can search either. Um, I go, like my artist name, I go by Wallish because um, I'm cool. <laughs> you're hip, you're hip. Yeah. Uh, so, but you, if you search Amy Wallish, like all my profiles would usually pop up as well because I usually have my name, my full name on there somewhere. So um, on Facebook, you can search Wallish, Amy Wallish. On Instagram, you can search Wallish, Amy Wallish, Wallish Official. Um, Twitter, it's Wallish Music. Um, so that's, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And if the world could be more like trees... I love it. Well, mm -hmm. Amy, I'm going to let you go so that you can get set up so that you can play. And um, we're going to we'll watch you in just a little bit. Uh, for those who are watching, um, we'll be ending our video here in just a second. But stay tuned because through the event page on our page will be Amy performing for you from Canada. Wonderful. Thank Ooh. you, Amy. Thanks, Jeff. And... I ha have a great evening. I know it's like goodbye on this end for now, but we'll, I'm excited to see you play. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Amy Wallish. You can check her out uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, and anywhere else music is played on a platform. Uh, we're going to take a short break. If you are interested in watching Amy perform, on our page is the event. You'll go to the event and you'll say that you're going in the discussion. If you click that button, because Facebook keeps changing these goddamn things, it will be in there. I'll also share it on our page. But stay tuned. Watch Amy from Canada. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Okay? Thanks. Bye.